Okay, here we are out here in the shop. So on my last picture, I noticed that my stars in the corner sucked. Um, I guess I'm getting a little pickier. When I first bought the telescope, I did a bunch of research online and I found an old website. I guess this telescope kind of had a cult following back in the day. It was actually a Yahoo group which no longer exists, but someone has preserved all of the information and it's on a website called Wiesner.com. I'll leave a link in the description if anybody wants to look at it. And on that website, I found a lot of information on how to use your telescope and I was just learning and I sucked it all in. I didn't do some of the more complicated parts. I just wanted to learn how to use a telescope. So now I'm ready to venture into some of that. I found an old PDF. This website looks like it's right out of the 1980s so does this pdf it's a 15 page pdf called complete collimation of the mead schmidt newtonian by peter kennett and danny ross lunsford it has a bunch of very low-tech ways of how to collimate this telescope and get it into perfect collimation not just using a laser collimator like i've been using before uh, it goes through how to actually center the collimation plate, make sure that your secondary mirror is perfectly aligned with your focuser, and by doing your general collimation, which I'll probably be doing by just using my laser collimator. I've made sure the laser collimator is collimated, so that should work out. And I'm gonna rip my telescope completely apart, clean my corrector plate, the secondary mirror, primary mirror. I think I'll Paint all the edges of my mirrors black. I'm going to print a new, I'm going to 3D print a ring to go around my primary mirror to cover up the clips. And we'll see if that does anything. Also, I have this wonderful, very cheap flocking material that I'm going to be flocking the inside of my OTA with, and also probably the inside of my dew shield when I get it 3D printed. I actually bought a dew strap so I'll be trying that out soon. The weather's starting to get cold. So let's see if all of this is going to pay off. Step one in the hypercollimation is to remove the retaining ring around the corrector plate with these screws right here. Um, they happen to be Allen head screws. It looks like a two millimeter Allen wrench. We'll take them off so First we do that. Okay. They are out. Just an FYI. These two, the one directly by the focuser and the one opposite, are twice as long as the other four. So let's remember that when we put them back together. So now we take the retaining ring off. And then there's a compression gasket here. And now we make sure that the corrector plate is perfectly centered in this ring and it doesn't really look like it is it looks a lot closer to the ring over here than it does here there are some cork gaskets so we'll measure I'm gonna take this piece off We'll have to take that off eventually anyway, so... Wow! It is not centered at all, so we're going to work on this a little. Okay, I think I have it centered. I just made a little measuring device and made sure it was the same all the way around. There were some little cork shims in four places and this one over here looks like it had been smashed so someone 
who had the telescope before me was maybe a little rough with it. Now we replace the compression ring. Wow, worked on me while it was out. So this is what holds the corrector plate in place. And we put the ring back on, try and get this centered. Okay, they say snug it up and tighten up the screws good. Don't worry about pink optics. That's not a thing on this corrector plate, I guess. It's just you snug it up so this compression ring holds it down evenly around all the way. So tighten it up the way you do lug nuts on a car and just go in a star pattern. So we'll do that. All right, step one complete, let's move on. Next step in the process is taking off the primary mirror cell. Uh, you wanna put it back on in exactly the same way. So this is my trick I use. Put a piece of tape on there. I'll cut it right here with, with a utility knife after I've marked it with a Sharpie in a few spots so I can line it up exactly when I put it back on. It comes off with these hex bolts, hex head screws. Uh, they're three millimeters this time, so we'll do that. I don't think I'll film it because it's boring. It's just taking out screws. So. All right, so the next step in the collimation is to actually square up and center the secondary mirror with the focuser here. But since I want to flock my inside of my tube, I really don't want to spend time messing with the secondary mirror because I just have to take the corrector plate off now anyway. So we'll do it after I flock. So let's get on to that. We'll take the corrector plate off by taking off these four hex head screws just like the back i'll put the little tape on it and mark it up so i put it back in the same spot and we'll continue on one good thing we noticed the edges of the secondary are already blackened out so i don't have to do that so one step ahead okay one open optical tube it's already flat black but it looks pretty dirty also got the black felt blocking material sticky on the back so in order to help out i'm going to take a microfiber cloth soak it in alcohol and wipe the whole inside of the tube down to try to remove any dust and residue over the last 25 years also i've heard some people having failures because of the cheap adhesive on the backs of some of these cheap felt pads so if I feel that's gonna happen to me I have the secret weapon some 3m super 77 this stuff will stick anything to anything and also I'll just draw a straight line down the middle of the tube right here lined up on the screws on each end and that's what I'll line my sheets are felled up to you and work around both sides of the tube so let's do it we got our wipe down good hopefully you can see that plumb line i got drawn inside i don't really know how to film this without getting in the way of everything so we're just going to use the magic of cinema and i'll be done in just a second all right we're done it's flocked it looks darker in there already i don't know if any of you have ever hung wallpaper i used to do it professionally a long time ago that came in handy cutting around the 
focuser and everything so now let's move on to centering the secondary mirror so here I am with this high-tech piece of equipment here this is going to help me make sure that my secondary mirror is perpendicular to the focuser so the long piece here is just wide enough to fit down inside the draw tube and the length goes from the top of the draw tube down to the edge of the secondary mirror so we just take it and drop it in like that try to make sure that it is perfectly straight and we'll have to turn the tube around to show you the rest right back well it's pretty dark in there but I also have another piece of high-tech equipment here I have a UV light that should make that show up uh, you can't really see too well if I get it right in the middle here but if it was not perpendicular the line would not be straight but I don't know if you can tell there's too much reflection but with my eye I can see that it is pretty straight so I guess we don't have to make any movements there on to the next piece and the next step in the process is to center and square up the secondary mirror with the focuser so I have this Cheshire eyepiece uh, has crosshairs looks a lot like my laser collimator without a laser it just has this small eye hole at the top so we put that in the focuser You're supposed to rack out the focuser as far as possible and then use the crosshairs to center the secondary mirror in the eyepiece you can see I've put a white piece of paper behind the secondary to help to be able to center it. Uh, secondary mirror should look like a circle because it's on a 45 degree angle. So in order to center it, we use the collimation screws, three on the outside, you know, angle the secondary to point the right way. And the middle one is what will move the secondary either in or out towards or away from the corrector plate. Now the thing you have to keep in mind when you want to move this center one, if you're moving it in, you'll have to loosen up the three on the outside in order to allow it to move in. Because you don't want to cause too much stress on the screws. They're Apparently they're pretty weak and they'll strip out easy and you don't want to do that. And also if you're moving the mirror away from the corrector plate, you want to screw it out and then tighten these three up at the same time. Because you don't want to let that mirror get loose and fall or anything like that. So you just do it a little at a time. You move either the three outside screws, just a bit of a turn and then move the inside or move the center one the same or you push the mirror out with the middle one and tighten up the three on the outside so I don't know if I'll be able to video through this little hole so I'll throw in a graphic from the PDF that shows what I'm actually trying to accomplish and if we can get a picture we'll try it okay so one thing I forgot to mention in all of this, if I would have had to rotate the mirror at all, this outside ring right here is the thing that holds the secondary onto the corrector plate. You just loosen that just barely enough so you could twist the secondary mirror. But fortunately, I didn't have to twist the mirror and I didn't have to adjust it in and out either. It was perfectly square. So came that way from the factory good job Mead here is my primary mirror mask 
my son cut it out with his laser cutter for me out of some thin wood so what I'm going to do is I will take my Dremel tool and carve out where the three sets of screws go then I will paint it flat black and we'll stick it on right here and you can see my horribly dirty mirror I don't know if it shows up so good on camera but it can stand a good cleaning we'll be doing that pretty quick all right moving on to the primary portion I'm trying to clean the primary mirror I think I've ran into a bit of a problem now you can see that there are some cork shims against the clips holding the mirror centered but I don't know if I can get close enough to show this or not there is an adhesive holding the mirror I tried prying it up a little bit with a screwdriver and it is not moving so I was going to do the old distilled water, distilled soapy water trick, but yeah, we're going to figure something else out. Here is the new plan. So the mirror is very dusty and dirty, it has a lot of crap on it, so I don't want to start just like wiping on it. So I have this. It's actually a dollar store glasses cleaner, but all it has in it is distilled water and isopropyl alcohol. So I'm just going to hose the mirror down this way and hopefully all the big chunks will just run off before I start cleaning it. So we'll do that. So now I just have some plain old Kleenex carefully try and not really wipe on it but get the excess stuff off new Kleenex I'm not pushing at all just kind of getting the moisture off all right this is what I'm trying next so I have this camera lens and sensor cleaner I figure if it's good enough for camera sensors it'll probably work pretty good on a mirror ammonia free alcohol free it's worked really good on camera lenses it came with a cleaning a camera cleaning kit I got also have clean microfiber cloth that came with it very fine very soft so we're just gonna try and clean it with that I don't see very much on there anymore we'll give it a quick blow with the Okay. I would have rather used the distilled water trick, but sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. This mirror is not coming off of this mirror cell, so this is the only way I could do it, but pretty good it there's no streaks no scratches no it looks pristine mirror now so so now we'll put the clips back on and the cover and my fancy primary mirror mask and go from there and here is my primary mirror mask I will attach it to the ring here I'll use this um, E6000 adhesive 
I'll just put three dabs on on it. Um, this is pretty good adhesive for sticking different substances to like wood to metal. I'll just put three dabs on just in case I ever want to take it off again. It shouldn't be too hard. All right, we'll let that one dry for a while. Okay, we're getting towards the end here. Now I had plans of painting the edges of my primary mirror black, but then I was thinking I could have it outside of the mirror cell, but we found out that ain't gonna happen. So my new idea, the Sharpie Magnum. I'll just paint the edges with this. Let me know if you, is that, is it gonna do any good? I don't know. Can light go up through the back of the mirror? You wouldn't think so, but people do this, so I'm going to. So we'll just do that. And for those annoying hard to reach areas, we'll just use a regular Sharpie. And there we have it. Oh, while I'm thinking about it, here's this cute little batten off mask that I printed. I'm going to do some serious focusing on my guide scope see if that helps and now here's the ring mask it's all dry now you can see the back of it covers up the clips so we'll just so we'll grab the clips replace them Place the ring. And now we will tighten these down, but tighten is not a good word, I guess. You don't want them too tight. You just want them snug down to hold the mirror in place. but not putting any pressure on the mirror. And there we have it, ready to go back on the telescope OTA and then the last thing we have to do is laser collimation and a very strange thing happened so I put the laser in I really can't get it to focus back there but the laser is smack dab in the middle so I don't have to do anything with the front collimation screws but maybe just a hair off so of course you deal with these screws back here the little one's the lock screw big one moves the mirror cell so we'll see what we can do about getting I don't know if I can get that any better but here we go Well, I guess that was it. Okay, it shows a little red glow in the camera, but I think we're pretty close. So, now all we have to do 
is take a shot. October 1st. Already has snow. There's that, I guess. I noticed I had quite a bit of light leak. I noticed I had quite a bit of light leakage during taking some of my darks, so this solved that. Well, was it worth it? Let's look at a couple of things and see if we can tell. So here is a picture of a really bright star before. You can see lots of spiky things. A big spike across the middle. Here is bright star after. To me it looks a little evener. Not quite as many spikes all around. Still have this grand spike in the middle here. What causes that? Anybody know? And next. You can see the stars in the corners look absolutely horrible. And here is after. They look better. Still not perfect. I don't know if I'll ever be able to get them perfect with this setup I have. Uh, I'm sure I have some sort of sensor tilt because I can't screw my camera in. It just locks in with a thumb screw. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I guess we'll just have to wait till this picture's done tomorrow morning and we'll process it and see what the final product looks like. Sorry for the extremely long video, but there was a lot of stuff to go over. I hope you found it interesting anyway. I learned a lot. I know a lot more about my telescope now, what things need to happen. Give me a like, share, subscribe, leave comments, buy me a Diet Mountain Dew. I'll talk to you later and clouds suck. Oh, and enjoy the Wizard Nebula.